In today's video, we're going to take a look at this pressure paddle from VK2IL. The pressure paddle is essentially a Morse code iambic paddle to be used with amateur radio and a built-in electronic keyer in the radio that uses no moving parts. It's just sensors on either side of the paddle that detect when you, your fingers touch them, and that's used with a small electronic circuit to enable the dits and the dahs with the electronic keyer. Now, the one really nice thing about this is it's really, really small, very compact, and really no moving parts. So uh, it's really nice to uh, pack into a kit that you might bring out to the field or up to a, a summit to uh, go play amateur radio. Uh, now all the information to put together one of these paddles in terms of what to get and things like that can be found in this blog uh, from VK3IL. And uh, I'll put this link uh, down in the video description down below so you can go find that. Links to the printed circuit board design files are found in the blog as well. And uh, you can go get them manufactured yourself from a number of different places. Uh, the author recommends allpcb.com or jlcpcb. I chose to order them through Oshpark. I found a, a pretty decent deal to get uh, three of these boards for about $10. And they took me about well, two, two to three weeks to get. So now I've got, I, I, I bought enough parts to go ahead and build three of these. You know, the parts list is listed here in the blog as well in terms of what you'll need to build one. I just essentially multiplied by, that by three and a little bit more and, uh, and placed my auto through DigiKey. There are two versions available, a shorter version and a longer version. Obviously these pictures are not to scale. Uh, the ones that I ordered are actually of the shorter version because that's what uh, I found the deal on on Oshpark. The schematic is actually uh, quite simple. It's really just two copies of this same circuit. Uh, we've got a, uh, a MOSFET with a very low uh, VGS uh, threshold and then essentially a small capacitor to kind of stabilize things and keep RF from getting into the circuit. And uh, really just two other components, a fixed resistor and a uh, touch sensor. And the touch sensor has got a very, very high uh, resistance when there's no finger touching it. And that essentially makes the gate get pulled down to ground and keeping the MOSFET off, therefore keeping that line you know, biased high from the keyer itself. And as soon as you put your finger on that sensor, that resistance drops dramatically, thereby raising the gate voltage, turning on the FET, and therefore dragging down the line and keying uh, the dot or the dash in the keyer. And it's just, again, it's like two copies of that. So let's go put this thing together and see how it works. And here's everything we're going to need. Uh, the circuit board itself, the TRS uh, plug and wire, to hook up to the terminals here and plug into the radio to enable the keyer. The 10 nanofarad capacitors, 470k ohm resistor, the uh, end channel MOSFET, the two sensors for the dits and the DAS. Got a large piece of heat shrink that we'll uh, cover the whole thing with when we're done. And of course some solder and some flux to aid with assembly. Now when putting together these very small surface mount parts, I typically like to just tin one end of the part I'll put that end down and then solder the other end together. So I'm going to grab a little solder and just tin the end of that part. That'll be enough to get it tacked down for me. Next I'll add a very small amount of flux to the circuit board pad and I'll spread that across the two of them. That'll make soldering a lot easier. So next uh, we'll take this capacitor we just tinned and bring it over to the, pin the pads and I'm just going to hold it in place with the tweezers and tack this one end down to the board just like that. So with that one end in place, we'll take my uh, fine solder here, my fine tipped iron, and just solder uh, the other end of the capacitor to the pads. And then I'm going to just touch up the other side as well. And the capacitor's down. We'll do the same thing for the resistor and the MOSFET, and do the same for the other side. Now for the MOSFET, it's probably easier to start with tinning one of the pads, and uh, I'll typically do that on the, on the lone pad on one side, and then uh, drop the part into that one, and then solder the other two ends. I've got the one side in place, and we'll just solder these other two sides. And one side is done. Do the same thing with the other side. Now these finger sensors have got a adhesive back, 
So we'll peel that adhesive back down, stick it down, and then solder the two leads. That's now in place, and we'll solder these two leads in place. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. After using an ohmmeter to check which colored lead went to the tip ring and sleeve, uh, determine that the black is going to the sleeve, that's my ground. Uh, the tip, which is the uh, dot, or, or dit if you will, is the red, and then white is the dash. So I soldered those up, and assembly is basically complete. I just need to clean the solder flux off of both sides of the board, and we'll, put the, we'll do a little bit of test, and then put the heat shrink on it. Alright, before we do any uh, final assembly with attaching the wire and covering it with heat shrink, let's just do a quick test to be sure it works. So the whole idea with this paddle is you just hold it in your hands and touch each side. So this should be the dot side or dit side, and this should be the dash side. So well, looks like it's going to work just fine. I first added a small cable tie to secure the wire to the board, and next we'll put the heat shrink on it. Well, there you have it. Get the heat shrink on there, and uh, everything looks like it's good to go. Now, uh, when you build one of yours, uh, you might choose to put a little closed cell foam on either side of the board so that uh, after we heat shrink it, it gives you something more to hold on to. This isn't too bad to hold on to, kind of flat, but uh, if it was a little bit rounder, it might, you might be able to hold it kind of in your fist like this. It all depends on what your style is. But it does seem to uh, work pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with it.